Other news this week. I just thought this shit was funny, honestly. So I, I believe it was earlier this year. I think Bleacher Report or some somebody had Terrell Owens on. And, and Terrell, Terrell Owens did what he always does. But stirred up some shit. He brought up the whole Super Bowl about how McNabb was throwing up. I might have even been on Twitter he did this. Anyways, so now McNabb went on to another show and was talking about this whole ordeal, saying he didn't throw up, saying, you know, it was T.O. who tore up the Eagles, saying that, you know, him and T.O.'s relationship still hasn't recovered. They still don't talk. They're still salty over that Super Bowl. And I don't blame them, frankly, but T.O. came back at McNabb and was like, Okay, really, bro? Did you tell him that you told him to pay Westbrook over me? Ultimately, I just think all this shit is hilarious because it's like these two grown-ass men who have developed into personalities after the fact are still bickering about a Super Bowl that was almost a decade and a half ago. Like, really? Y'all don't have kids or some other shit to, like, talk about or be proud about? Moreover, I just think it's hilarious because it's like, is that is that is that what's going to happen to me and Kenny? Are we going to be that petty if we ever go our separate ways? Like, or is there another level of pettiness beyond McNabb and T.O.? Because honestly, I can't really think of a worse breakup than McNabb or T.O. If you can think of one, you can tweet me. At P Certified, or you can hit me up on Instagram, P D C, spelled out. If you don't know it, then you probably don't need to know it. Nonetheless, other news this week, man. My fucking Raiders. My Raiders are officially the Vegas Raiders. I know, man. Breaking news, but it's official. The Raiders have left Oakland. They're now in Vegas. They've been parading Derek Carr around doing PR, talking about how excited he is to be at the Vegas Raiders and all that. And it's great and it's fine and it is what it is. But honestly, as someone who's been writing about the Raiders for the past six years, Every day, religiously, it's not easy for me to write Vegas or Las Vegas or Sin City Raiders or write anything other than Oakland in front of Raiders, honestly. Even writing L.A. feels weird. And they were actually here for 10 years. But it's happening. They're moving to the Death Star in Vegas. And between that, between the draft officially, logistics being released, they're going to have the draft in Vegas in 2020. Hopefully, Kenny and I will be there. But they're going to essentially shuttle draft picks. Instead of walking across the stage, they're actually going to beat in boats and go across the fountains in front of the Bellagio, I believe. Is it the Bellagio or Caesars? I think the draft is at Caesars and the podium is going to be in front of Bellagio, something like that. But yeah, everything's going to be free, open to the public. It's going to be in prime time. They're going to have concerts. It's going to be a whole ordeal. It's going to be a whole NFL festival for essentially three days in Vegas, which will be a crazy welcoming parade for the NFL and for the Raiders and for this whole experience. And we'll see how it all plays out. But honestly, it kind of seems a lot like organized chaos um, to be determined. But yeah, I mean, and outside of the Raiders, you know, leaving their home, We just have to accept it. Like, there's nothing else we can do. The Vegas Raiders are here, and we have to get on board. Just like we have to get on board with the fact that the L.A. stadium is is 85% done. Across social media, there was all sorts of, of videos of the stadium, the new arena, the I mean, the new ceiling, I'm sorry, and everything else going on there. So, you know, it doesn't matter that we're in a housing crisis or, you know, Traffic is bad and roads are bad and our earthquake is coming. But, hey, we have a shiny new stadium development being done in Inglewood, Los Angeles. So it's something to be excited about, right, folks? 
shaking my head. But in other good news, man, shout out to the Raiders. One thing they did do as the Vegas Raiders was donating 500K to help the state of Nevada clear debt for kids. Um, I think that one really hit home to me just because, one, I know how bad Vegas public schools are. Like, and so I can imagine how much students are in debt there. And I can't help but think nutrition and, and you know, being able to eat a meal has something to do with that. And, you know, being shamed in a lunch line because you can't afford lunch because your mom forgot to pay the account or your mom couldn't pay the account or your mom didn't have the money to give you. Like, all that shit is unnecessary. And the fact that the Raiders are, you know, making their first step in the community by taking care of that is really going to help them develop some lifelong fans and it, and it, and it spreads goodwill as someone who's been there in those lunch lines, you know, I, I mostly had lunch free, but the people that, that didn't, I know some days they didn't have their lunch bags. I know some days, you know, I threw them a little milk bag or a little chip bag because it was what it was. Like that's what we did to maintain what we had to do so shout out to the Raiders for doing that bit of good news a couple other announcements um Antonio Brown update because we need another one of those but yeah Antonio Brown is wanted by the police for a assault incident that happened um Tuesday of this week <sighs> in Florida they're calling it a bur- burglary and battery um, man, this story, you really can't write it. Like this whole 30 for 30 on since from the day that Antonio Brown left Pittsburgh until like, I don't even know, because every time I think it's over, it just keeps developing. It, it, it It's outside of people getting murdered. It's probably the most outrageous thing since Aaron Hernandez, which I unfortunately had to shave my beard. Because I suck at lining shit up. And so I was trying to keep my beard when I got this fresh cut and going to Mobile. So I could continue to disguise myself as not fake Fat Hernandez. (sighs) Since this fucking movie dropped, everyone's been DMing me. Oh, you look like Aaron Hernandez. Messaging me. You look like Aaron Hernandez. Hey, you hear that Aaron Hernandez documentary. And so I tried to grow out my beard to go incognito. But no more. The beard had to go. I'm in full fat Aaron Hernandez clone. So if you see me out in these streets. No, I am not Aaron Hernandez. Okay. Okay. (sighs) Duffy sigh. Speaking of other shit that happened this week that you probably don't care about. The Raiders signed Nevin Lawson to a one year $3.5 million contract. Uh, dude ended up starting for them really out of necessity and injuries, but I read somewhere that he's gone the longest without a pick in like years, like 400 snaps without a pick is unprecedented. Of course, he doesn't get tested. He does have some versatility. He's a decent player, but the price is right. I'm just not in love with it, man. That's your first transactional move as the Vegas Raiders? Signing Nevin Lawson? Like, really? I don't even know why I'm talking about this, but honestly, it was a slow week outside of the Senior Bowl. So, I got to talk something in the NFL. Which, again, here's another tired story. Another story that probably doesn't impact you and you might not even care about. Eli Manning is the first person from the 2004 QB class to retire. He leaves his peers, Ben Roethlisberger and Phillip Rivers, behind by announcing his retirement. Rivers is still trying to play. Roethlisberger is still trying to trying to play. But Eli says he is heading out. Eli earned $252 million, which is the most of the 2004 draft class. But some people expect him to get surpassed by that in 2020. And we have a caller. So, hello, caller. What is your name and location? Uh, 
Uh, my name is Fat Aaron Hernandez. <laughs> uh, what do you want? I'm closing out the show. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit, Fat Aaron Hernandez. Why did you give me that? Like, I'm going to use that. I'm putting it. That's the name. No, I'm no. The correct name. quote was That's Fat Hernandez. The, the correct quote was Fat Hernandez. Yeah, Fat Hernandez. That's what's on. That's what's on your uh, touchdowns and chances hoodie when I come back to Cali. You're welcome. It'll be waiting for you when you get there. But uh, Eli Manning retired in Southern Antonio Gates. I literally just said that. I literally just said that. I know. I just wanted to just let you know. All right, man. Well, yeah, since well, you're here, do you want to do an untis- unnecessary toughness rank? Can you do it in two minutes? Because I got to go I mean, get a no, beanie I'm, and a sweater, I'm, apparently. I'm, chilling, I'm just chilling writing stories and eating ice cream that I um, got from McDonald's off of DoorDash. So, yeah, I'm good. I'm chilling. Um, All right. Yeah, bring an umbrella. Pack your jacket. All right, man. Peace. I'll see you in a bit. All right, so my unnecessary toughness rant, I really don't have one. I already kind of started the show with the rant, talking about, you know, Kenny and now his place in the sports media game and the whole touchdowns to t- tangents brand. And I also talked a lot about Senior Bowl, All-Star Games, and then went on a few takes and tangents for the record just to keep you up to date with the NFL uh, we're going to get more into the Super Bowl next week. Hopefully have a few guests in here for you. Some guests hopefully representing both sides right now. You know, we're heavily chief focused. Shout out to Mikhail PG. Um, also going to try to get Gunnels in here since he's also a Chiefs fan. But, yeah, that should be an interesting show. Our Super Bowl show is always interesting. We always keep it fun. So definitely tune in for that. Otherwise, man, shout out to the Good News Sports. Shout out to the Good News Radio Station. Shout out to the X Squad Affiliates. Shout out to FBC Radio. Shout out to your favorite podcast platform where you can find this podcast. You can also go to touchdownsandtangents.com. Go to the Listen tab. You can find all our platforms that we're at. You can also go to TDT Space OT where you can find our overtime podcast featuring... You know, our other takes from around the sports world and also Kenny's Community Conversations and our live reporting. So make sure you go there for the bonus content. And lastly, TDs underscore tangents on Instagram and Twitter. Follow us, like us, hate us, whatever you got to do. And TDT underscore overtime on Snapchat for all the draft content. So with that, I am PD Camarillo. Um, I thank you for uh, holding on with me through the show. I know I, I rambled a lot. I was all over the place. But that's just who I am. So that's just who I'm going to be. And with that, man, that's not the right job. But, yeah, man, this touchdowns and tangents. I'm out. Good night and good luck.